so I joined a small group mostly because this is just the experience I've had most of my life. So I grew up in a church family where small groups was just a thing that you did. My parents, I think, ran one when I was in my kind of middle to late teens for just people from the church that would come over. And I was always involved in like the youth small groups, which would just be some weekday evening, all the whatever, 12 to 15 year olds would gather in someone's house, talk about Jesus, possibly watch a video and stuff like that. So yeah, it was always something that was just part of being a Christian. It wasn't something I thought about massively. Uh, when I went to uni, there were like small groups at uni. Those were like slightly differently shaped because they were much more focused on being a student. So there was one that I was much more involved in in the CU that was the hall group program where you would have students that would be taught about the Bible in the halls, Christian students usually, and then they would be encouraged to go out and talk about the Bible with their friends. And then there were church small groups that were much more teaching focused, less kind of activity focused, if that makes sense. Still both incredibly vital. So this is all kind of a backdrop for me and then I come back to FBC after going to uni for four years and I'm like, all right, I'm, you know, I'm going to sermons, I'm getting involved in kind of tech and kids and stuff like that. I'm really enjoying it, but I can tell that my faith is kind of backsliding because I'm not having that basis, that weekly basis on something that isn't just sat in a room with 200 other people listening to Chris talk about something. And I felt that that was something I really missed and I needed. The Sunday is really important for kind of being told and being taught, which is really good. I think we, generally in the West, we don't like being told what to do, which is fair enough. But I think we, we then struggle for any, to find any direction, which I think is where small groups really come in. We take that context of like what Chris says on a Sunday morning, we then apply it to our lives in a practical way and actually talk about it together and not just kind of sit on our own and kind of go, so Chris was talking about this on Sunday, how should that affect my life? But instead, really think about it together. It's also, it's really interesting, so touching back on uni again, I, I was always around students. So I was always around people about my age, going through about the same thing as me. But then it was really interesting coming to FBC, where my school now, uh, small group is now like a wide array of angels, a wide array of like backgrounds and life walks. And it's really interesting hearing the experience from these people. Like I'm young and dumb and I have no idea what I'm doing and it's really interesting learning from these people and the, like, the wealth of experience they have. Ah, so let's, lesson one, uh, I need to buy more work trousers. Uh, so that, that's a common theme in my small group that I do not have enough work trousers but that's, that's less theological so I'll stray away from that. Um, and it's, I think one of the bigger ones, more the recent one for me is like you just really cares about what you do with your money and your time, and like what you do with your money and your time really demonstrates who you are as a person. So if you spend your money on saving for the future, that means you know, you're a practical person who wants to think ahead. But if you're just saving for yourself or your family, then you're actually incredibly selfish with your time and money. Like I appreciate it. I'm you know, a young 20 something, I'm not thinking about the future at all, I'm an idiot. But like how I spend my money now really shows where my priorities are. If I'm the first bit of my money, or the first thing I think of when I get my money is, oh, I can buy a new TV, or book, or game, or computer, or whatever, that's something about me, that really demonstrates that that's my priority. Whereas if my first priority should be, how can I use this to help other people, help God, help the course of like the church? Which is a difficult thing, and I'm like, I'm not saying I get it right, I get it wrong most of the time, but it's something to think on and it's, yeah, it's something that's really shaping me. Being part of a small group is much more of like the, it strengthens it and it grows it, but I think the analogy I was thinking of earlier was, so I spent four years at uni studying pharmacy, and it was all very interesting and intellectual, but it was all kind of theory based, and it was all much more abstract. But then now that I'm actually working in my training year, I'm seeing how that, all that theory starts to fit together in a much more practical sense. And I think for me, that's like, small groups are the melding of sermons where we are taught, and then small groups come in and go, okay, but this is how we apply that in our actual lives. It's just a really interesting way of putting forward the message of God and like how we should be living our lives for the glory of the kingdom in an actual practical way that isn't deep theology and lots of doctrine and all thou shalt nots and all that, but is instead intimately focused on like, who we are and how we should live our lives. 
I mean, uh, this is kind of a, it comes to a question I have to ask you, is like, why have you not joined a small group yet? This isn't a judgment thing, this is just a, like, what reasons do you have? And I think for some people, some of it would be time. And I think in reality, unless you are working in a very high stress environment where you actually do not have any time, generally, you do actually have at least one to two hours a week. And a lot of, at least most personal school group, we do it online. So there's not really that much like investment in terms of driving there or looking for places to be or parking or whatever that it's really easy to get there. Um, if you feel that you can't be part of a small group because you don't know enough or you haven't been, you wouldn't call yourself a Christian for long enough, don't. Like there's not, there's never a reason. Um, I'm going to restrain from using a biblical example, but um, we, even the youngest Christians, even the youngest people who have only the inkling of what it means to be a Christian, we are all involved in this journey together and we should all be stepping forward together.